Uh, my name is Mark Buell, the National Sales Director for Results Positive, and today's webinar is going to be the Business Service Management. Um, in the agenda, we're actually going to have two webinars. One is going to be the first overview. We're going to go through uh, a product solution overview, talk about some of the value around the application performance management, Operations Manager I, which is referred to as Operations Bridge, We'll look at a new offering uh, from HP in the last year called Service Intelligence. This is basically an analytics tool that resides in the runtime service model that feeds into a product, uh, application performance management, and OM, or analytics for service reporting and so forth. And then the final area of BSM is event remediation automation. And, and again, this is something new that was re-architected a few years ago to allow advanced correlation um, as well as quick break fix automation. So let's talk about the business service management overview. Um, we, these are the things that we hear a lot of, and just in terms of most companies have these same types of problems, no matter if they're vertical or commercial space. So some of the industry standards are too many fat managed domain tools. Uh, this is number one. There's a lot of good tools out there that look at very specific elements of IT or applications, but what happens is, because there are so many, um, it's an incomplete view of infrastructure at health. And I see this personally where there are events that happen, and all of a sudden, the plasma screen turns red with an event. And the problem is, these domain tools don't correlate with events. Um, it's often optimized by domains, not across silos. And basically what that means is that everybody has their own tools for looking at the network, the day-to-day, the, app, the application server's storage, but it's not brought together to where you have a manager of managers. And what this does is it has an incomplete or inaccurate measurement reported across the IT service and business services. And, and this shows up when we look at when there is an outage or performance degradation, that <clears throat> using the inaccurate measurements or having gaps uh, causes problems when you're trying to identify the cause. The second one is inability to prioritize issues based on business impact. Again, this comes out to the war room situation where you have a lack of visibility to end users' experience. And so it's hard to be able to prioritize what to work on from an event perspective if you don't know what part is causing the critical issues based on what the end users are experiencing. Infrastructure services are not related to business services. That means that Infrastructure is being looked at from a very solid perspective and not from the perspective of a business service or application. And it's difficult, we have difficult here, but actually I would say it's almost impossible to prioritize IT time without knowing the impact of time if it's affecting a critical business application or if it's affecting a printer field. Many times they don't know the impact based on the severity. And then finally, slow and efficient problem in its identification and resolution process. This is really talking about mean time to resolution. And this comes out of the inability to optimize process for a event, uh, an incident, and problem management. You can do the silo tools, the domain, the way they're approached, the way they're implemented. Frequency of changes will kill an organization very quickly. And not to be able to have these changes put into your event console so that if there is an issue, what does it do to a change? And this will go back to, can you implement uh, configuration items from a known source, such as a CMDB, to tell you that a problem was due to a change or not? And you can't proactively inform service customers. And this is one that's really irritates, I'll say, a lot of operation DPs and even CIOs, is that before something happens, is that you can get a hold of the customer saying, hang on, we're about to have an issue, we'll be back in two minutes. So, <clears throat> As a whole, the business service management from HP, the whole idea behind this is tracing transactions to applications to infrastructure. And it's a comprehensive, and I'll highlight automated, up-to-date service models tying the applications to the infrastructure. If you can do that, then you have a reasonable way of determining root cause problems and the business impact to issues. So starting with the top piece, it's called performance Application performance management uh, is an entire uh, market segment, and it really encapsulates the ideas of end user experience, service level management and agreements, as well as operational. 
Um, the ability to look at transactions from an availability and performance perspective. Diagnostics that allow you to do root cause analysis from an application perspective. And then this is on for on-premise, cloud, virtualization, mobile, and the solution look at all of those different types of environments. Looking from the bottom up, we're looking at infrastructure performance management. This is where we gather event streams and performance metrics for servers, network, storage, virtualization, ESX, and vCenter, third-party monitoring tools. And the idea here, and this is kind of the secret sauce, is that we, we put these two together using the runtime service model. And what that creates for us is a manager of managers, a single tenant left, what we call operations management, I, or OMI. So this is a top-down, bottom-up view linking applications to infrastructure. Once we have this environment built, now we're able to do things that are very meaningful for, for IT operations, is universal event correlation and service intelligence. And we'll get to both of these in just a moment. So one of the areas that I hear a lot of from executives is that we've got a lot of tools, people look at things very differently, especially when there's an instance, an incident or a problem that comes up. Uh, the UFI Collaborative Platform really means there's a personalized dashboard view that's based on the same data. Uh, our competitors in other areas have these types of tools, but what they struggle with is to be able to consolidate these tools and put it into a meaningful service model that everybody's looking at the same data from a different perspective. So in this case, the line of business executive looks at it from a service level view. Right? Typically, they're not as interested in servers and network devices. They just want to know that that business service is healthy, it's up, and it's being care and taken care of. First tier, uh, first tier operators and application support have their views. And so, for example, on the operation side, it's a consolidated event console, and this is taking in feeds from end user management and third party uh, type of products, so that they have a holistic view across IT and not from a silo perspective, that when an when issue does hit, that it's being triaged with this holistic view. Application support is really interested mostly in the application layer. So we're looking things from a transaction and application performance view. So when there's an issue, this is a team that usually is first to be called in to look at things like this application up or down, uh, to do the code freeze, to the CPU off the line. And then tier two is more of the specialists. They have their own views with the service service management. So for example, there might be a virtualization operator who is looking at the ESX, the D centers, the zones, the different kind of virtualization environments. And the network support may have their own view of the same configuration items. And obviously this is for network performance events. And then finally there's a mobile console. And this is really important. There's a lot of people who don't see up their decks any longer. And they need to go around and there's an event that happens if they need to clear out something very quickly that results positive actually has HP anywhere where you put many apps on getting these full views on your mobile devices. And then on top of everything, what we're seeing a lot of traction with is that we need to be able to show transparency to the business and be able to roll up and roll back different kind of objectives and goals as it applies to IT from the business. And so, for example, this uh, is a single pane of glass, and it's really looking at IT performance with industry's broadest coverage and investment. So this is the from the PMO office, PPM, development. Uh, operation storage of security so that the IT executive and the business have a clear understanding of overall health privacy. These are key performance indicators driven, again, cascaded throughout the portfolio. So that when a CEO talks to a CIO, those business goals and objectives are clearly defined. So those are cascaded throughout the organization so everybody's aligned to those same goals. And it's important to note that capturing IT performance is really done at the base level. So, for example, we come into uh, areas where they don't have captured information today from a server perspective. And so, having this information, we know that the gaps are with an IT, so it works both ways. 
And the advisor reported to ask for an analytic to do the health check around IT performance. Uh, and finally, there's an open data model, which is really important for this. In fact, we have done a Salesforce integration to show that it's not just IT that has performance things that we can use in this dashboard, but we can also pull in non-IT things that test sales, supply chain, and so forth. So, easily customizable, KPI driven. And finally, uh, we get a lot of questions about testing class, testing breed. Uh, what we've seen in the past, especially through mergers and acquisitions, is that IT has historically bought point solutions that are best in class. And, and one of the reasons that results positive have stayed with HP is the fact that it is best in class around all these areas around event correlation and analytics, application performance management, discovery dependency mapping, and risk automation. Now, the value behind this is that now we can use best of class products into a single platform. And that is, an, that is a very large differentiator from what HC does and what the rest of the market has available. So let's take a look at the ATM 360 view. Uh, and specifically, Gardner has five dimensions that they look at ATM. The first dimension is user-defined transaction profiles. And this is basically being able to trace transactions as it transverses across the infrastructure and assign value to that, and to be able to diagnose any problem if it could stop or hold up along any tier. The second area is what Gardner calls end-user experience monitoring, and you'll notice the word perception. It's the perception of the end-user on a website, capturing transactions, looking at robots to simulate transactions for analysis. The third area is application component of deep dive, and again, this just gets down to the problem. When a problem occurs, how quickly can your ATM solution identify root cause problems? The third area is application component of discovery modeling. So when we talk about service models, the importance of service models, it really comes back to the solution that can dynamically discover application components from OSI levels two through seven and make those uh, the dependencies and interrelationships relevant as you do event correlation. And the fifth dimension is application performance database. And this is data that's covered by third-party tools, um, OM agents, by end user diagnostics, everything that you would create in a performance management database that you can link to a service model. The letter says if you have these five things in place, you truly achieve application performance management. Now, as an overlay, this is how HP DSM products is used for these different areas. So, user-defined transaction profiling, for HP real user monitor, or they refer to as RUM, and HP transaction vision, which is more of an instance-level transaction tracer. In user experience, there are two products. One's called business process monitor. The other's called real user monitor. And we'll get into these, what these are specifically in just a little bit. Application component deep dive, there's two components that are used. One's called diagnostics, and then it's called transaction vision, which we just talked about. For the application component discovery and modeling, um, HP DSM auto discovery, and I don't use that word lightly, auto discovery. It just basically means that anything that is being monitored and brought into DSM is automatically created a configuration item and a service model behind it. And the other area is Discovery and Dependency Mapping. This is a separate mapping tool from HP that maps all levels to OSI layer. And what we've used for the past on this is to bring those models into the operational runtime service model where we have a complete picture uh, from all the whole OSI stack that allows us to do better at that management. And then finally, the Application Performance Database um, on the bottom end of business service management, uh, they use a runtime service model. Now, this is a database, and it's also a configuration management database, but it's been designed for operation versus what traditionally has been designed for universal configuration management database, and that's an important distinction. The runtime service model is used for operation. Configuration management database is used for configuration release managers. 
So one of the areas that are very important is to be able to link all these systems, application transactions together. So this is a top view. Um, in our next session, we do a deep dive. We'll go actually go into this in a real time and show you how these are used in a data lot. So this is referred to as a top view. And what this does, this is what goes into the plasma screens generally um, in operation centers or application support desktops. And this is a holistic service delivery view. So from the top level, you're given a business service. This is a logical entity that describes a business service and possibly multiple applications make up the service. And so what you're seeing here is an online banking application uh, that serves up real users that are going into the data center and making requests and transactions. You can create synthetic users, and these are basically recorded scripts that can be replayed at five, ten minutes, and you can deploy these by location as a robot. Um, and you can also look at the infrastructure. So the infrastructure that supports the online banking app, whether it be um, metal devices, storage, systems, virtualization, security, then you get rolled up in aggregated and the infrastructure. And then you can do a high transaction. So a lot of what aligns with businesses like to buy up their transactions by location or the type of transaction. So this view can be modified and configured to any way that meets the requirements of IT. Alright, so let's talk about end user management. So when people ask me, where do I get started? What's the first thing we need to do to get started with DSM? Uh, I ask them, do, we, do you have this visibility and coverage around your end user experience? And so there's two actual ways that that's used with HP end user management. The first is some specs. And that really just means when we talked about before, that they recorded scripts with a product called the user generator that you record and replay the script um, every few minutes to at least see if the proactively the user is monitoring the catch problems. Really important to understand that 70 to 80 percent of the time, if you have your synthetic setup right in the right location, that you can find problems before your end users are recording problems. You're going to use this for checking a system of nodes on the system. And importantly, check from different points of presence. And so if you have offices around the globe, and you only have one office having a problem, you can very easily detect and deduce that you have a land, land, cloud problem versus a systemic problem within the data center. On the real user side, this is real users using a tap or span port that captures every single user's 25 by 7 at an instant level. So every user comes into the system, is being looked at, and the behavior is being determined 24 by 7. Passive end user monitoring means that there is no impact whatsoever to your system. And by the way, one of the great things that we've been asked for for years is being able to capture these real users, what they do, where they click, the data they use, to be able to create a low bitter script to bring it back into pre-production as part of their test harness. Business process monitors specifically we talked about is deploying the source of presence throughout the U.S., North America, the globe, so that you can bring them in and quickly find out if there is a problem uh, either from a network perspective or an application perspective. So synthetic users are stimulated by running scripts at a very regular interval. Only seen these regular intervals be anywhere from two minutes to twenty minutes. If you've got a high volume, you want to take that down to two minutes. If it's one that's not used often, but you want to keep up, you might want to extend those intervals out. And so the idea is to monitor and manage the performance and availability of critical applications. And it covers almost all that. As the UGEN, for those of you who use it, know it has about seven protocols that it can cover. It includes client server, anything that's really TCPI from base. So SOAP, XML, and of course web base. And again, the benefits are proactive transaction notifications. Getting that alert before you're getting a call on the service desk or when it's coming up with an infrastructure problem. Measure from multiple locations and then creating baselines and training reports. 
And again, real user monitor um, captures real user experience from the network traffic. So basically, from a technical perspective, it's really the packet coming into a very intelligent server that breaks these packets down into transactions. In fact, I'll say that when you use both the synthetic monitor, it actually captures that um, and makes it part of your baseline. It can monitor applications from multiple tiers from the back and the front end, and how that helps you is that if you see things coming to the very front of the data center, um, but you have issues, you can actually deploy this between the web server and the application server, the application server and the database of mainframe, so now you can break down that transaction of where the latency is very, very quickly. It alerts you if the flood is against a degradate or it's critical. And again, we're trying to be proactive. Understand impacted users, their locations, the applications they're using, and the transaction definitions they're looking at. And the capture data is detailed for diagnostics. And so a, a very important point here is with end user management, both business process monitor and real user monitor, there is a drill down sequence right into the diagnostic step, which we'll talk about in a second. So what you're seeing here is a 360 view. This is part of DSM's first view. Uh, this is where you consolidate transactions, application and performance, and events. So at the bottom, you'll see the view of the model. So this is a business transaction, typically real user or synthetic users coming to the system, and the transaction configuration items that they're tied to. At the bottom, you see the triage breakdown for quick isolation. And so at a glance, an operator or app support can see if a location is having a problem. In this case, you're seeing Moscow, London, Palo Alto. The X's and lines are problems with transactions. The colors, KPI, are around performance. And so at a glance, you can look at each one of those transactions, seeing if it's a transaction problem, if it's not getting through, or and or if it's a performance problem. And then finally, you're seeing the same view, the system approach. Uh, this is really important to be able to very quickly eliminate what the problem is not. Now, in this case, there is an application performance and availability issue, and it's tied to software performance. But you'll see the system performance is actually green. So this is a case where you do not need to call the database person or the network person or the server person. This is an application issue probably tied to code, CPU memory as code execute. And that's indicated by the little red X under software. So one component breakdown, I got to say, we've seen more power being able to isolate problems by breaking down user sessions. So what you're seeing here on the top hand side, this is the analysis report. And this page detail gives you the URL, the page name, start time, number of components. And there's a, what they call a time offset, but last component. So you can very quickly tell, looking at the components at the bottom of the screen, which one is taking the most time. And many times you don't know that until you have a solution like that. So, for example, you'll see at the post the bottom it says query.js, which is a JavaScript, taking the majority of its time, which tells you that JavaScript is not executing very quickly. These gaps are a result of server think time plus unmonitored components. Very important in the triage of your application. And this is all about mean time to resolution. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. That's why people buy these products, is they want to take the time. They could take long minutes or hours down to seconds. If you have a system that's unified, that's normalized with all the captures, and you have reports that can tell you to isolate things, you can really decrease your mean time for resolution. This particular graph shows you availability and load over time, and then performance and load over time. At the bottom, you have a business summary. It's broken down by transactions. It gives you the percentage of real time location, the period if it's having a problem, and the location. So this is typically used in application support. They want to take at a glance over the last day the health of this application, they can see what it is on this particular graph. Alright, let's talk about HP diagnostics. So where end user management runs uh, the real time 
and the synthetics tell you you have a problem. It does not tell you what the problem is. And so one of the value propositions around DSM is tying those transactions, the end user experience, into a diagnostic approach, which is a piece of code essentially that sits on an application server, such as J2EE or .NET or SAP middleware or PeopleSoft middleware, that now you can tie end user problems, drill down to the application, drill down to the database. So what it provides is data monitoring and collection of historical sub-component level data. You can break down the methods down to all the way down to SQL calls to the database or a call out to the mainframe. A transaction topology and triage, why this is really important, is that we can take everything that's discovered from diagnostics, the all the JQW architecture, and we can create a service model that we can tie into end users. And so it completes the picture of how a transaction flows and the components that it has. And then when we do triage, we can see some relationships what the issue is. And then pre- and post production tool integration is one of the biggest value propositions and differentiators from this solution is that we can use the same tools with load runner that we can use with DSM diagnostics. For example, we can use the same DU gen script. Scripts that are written in QA can leverage be used as business process monitor. We can use diagnostics, which is identical code base that's built into load runner that's built into DSM. We can use the same service level definition. And oftentimes people use site flow in load runner, which is part of load runner, you get it as an entitlement. If you set up your instrumentation with site flow in pre-production, it just becomes a migrate move into production. So all these reusable assets create what we call the performance lifecycle. And as far as enterprise ready, we know there's a lot of competitive tools out there that do a pretty good job of diagnostics, but one of the things I hear is feedback is they don't scale, or the scaling starts impacting the application. So diagnostics was designed for a very large shop that can be distributed to scale the environment and have as little impact on the application as possible. And so from this, you see the end user deep dive. At the bottom here, it says slow server reset. So those slow server reset actually come from business process monitor and real user monitor. This is how it's integrated into diagnostics. And so it's hard to see, but the example here is showing a 3.8 second server request. And what we can do here, and we'll show you this on the next webinar, is drill down and it opens up this screen um, that looks at the monitoring investigation. So that you can quickly identify from an application perspective where the problem is. And by the way, you can find exceptions very quick. Um, and which was donated by the down arrow. Uh, something that's been new in diagnostics, and this is something that's been waited for for a very long time, um, and it has tremendous value about mean time of resolution. It's called smart transaction. Um, this is new as uh, diagnostics 9.12, and what it allows you to do is when you see a poor performing method, um, you can drill down the call stack on demand. Um, and again, it's very difficult to do with other tools without having to instrument it. So what diagnostics does is that it auto instruments. And so that you click on the plus sign and it drills these into the call stack, which is what this is. Uh, this is really important because you don't want to instrument everything. If you try to instrument everything, you're going to have overhead problems with CPU and memory that's going to impact the app. So this keeps you from having to instrument or over instrument, but at the same time has the flexibility to drill down on things that are not instrumented. So what you're seeing here is a Java call stack. So at the very top, you see the trader service by method, and that's actually a request from any of the system that came from BCM. And so by just looking at the stack, you just go down, and you can see the trader being check user ID method it's taking the bulk of the time. Uh, this is something that's great to use when you're looking in production. And you can get a hold of the developer and say, I've got this problem. I can duplicate this problem because I captured it with real users. And I know it's having to do with the trader B. So in just a few clicks, you're able to get down to the method level problems 
of a end user performance experience product. And this is extraordinarily powerful. And the reason why you want to use these tools in both pre-production and production. Okay? Service level management, uh, really what this comes down to is transparency to the business. And again, businesses, lines of businesses aren't necessarily that interested in the IT components, the servers, and network devices and storage. They care about how the help of my business service or my application is behaving. So what service level management does is it provides a baseline. So when you're running real users, you know, synthetic users, but you can trim it over time. You can look at things like proactive monitoring so that before you breach a service agreement, it lets you know you're able to measure it accurately. That you can determine in real time user availability and performance. And in this case, this is a global map we use, but we've also used different images, for example, for institutions where they have multiple buildings just to see if there is an impact and where that KPI is set in. And then finally, one of the biggest things we see, we see this with high volume transactions. Um, direct TV uses this to identify high revenue generating business impact. If it's a real time impact or over time impact. The business needs to know what the cost of an average performance problem is. And then measuring business impact is, I think, very important. So with S11, you can define and publish performance and availability. Key performance indicators. It monitors and supports S1 for performance and availability. You can create custom reporting and analytics. And then finally, you can create business rules and financials so that when there is an outage, when there is a problem with the baseline, that you know immediately what the impact is from a financial perspective. Okay, so that's the application performance management side. Um, this is the application of the operations manager I side. So we went from the top part of looking at application to down. Now we're going to look at it from the, from the infrastructure up. And operations manager I links these two together for operations tier one and tier two. So just a quick value proposition. Minimize the cost associated with world room generating to result in application and transaction performance issues. When we do ROI analysis, a world in scenario is by far the number one return on investment for investing into operations manager I. It reduces the average number of meetings per year, which means that in the world room, you've got to call a lot of people frequently. It reduces the labor hours, and the biggest chunk of your ROI is really around labor per incident. And it reduces the average number of persons involved in the problem resolution, and particularly very expensive tier two, tier three, and development personnel. It also reduces the total cost of activity around incidents, classification, diagnostics, recovery, reporting, and collaboration. So the key feature is really around what they call operations manager I. It just allows for fast identification when a problem occurs, and specifically in a dynamic environment. And there's a lot of challenges around virtualization of cloud because things change all the time. Sometimes you'll have fraud on the ESX machine. With Manager I, the way it's developed and the way you can auto-discover, you don't have to worry about discovering things ad hoc in the way four or five days or over a week. It gets a new configuration item in the month. It does it real time. So it's used dynamic business services and its underlying infrastructure. It definitely improves IT efficiency. And so the result is fewer unnecessary escalations to expensive subject matter experts. So creating operations bridge. So this reminds me when uh, on the Navy I, I, I spent time operating on the enterprise, look at the bridge and everyone had their own monitor. They're looking at software radar, sonar, everybody is looking at different things. So this is the kind of analogy to that. So this is the bridge where you take all these different kinds of service of events and performance and you roll them into a single manager of managers. So in this example, we're running everything into the runtime service model. So for example, operations manager servers, operation manager agents, and see these are the agents that sit on servers to look at CPU performance. Site scope, which is the agent list monitor. Network notice manager for network device advanced performance. Business process monitoring and real user monitoring. 
And, and this is the most important one, third-party domain managers. And so one of the things that um, when they re-architect the DSM is they create the integration adapter. With the thought of there's a lot of tools outside that are not HD branded that we've got to be able to bring in to close gaps that we otherwise could not see. And then finally is the DDM or UBI, which is the discovery tool from HP, and as well as federating configuration items from the UCMD. So we can pull and push things that are discovered with LM versus things that are discovered with normal frequency of the UCMD. And this all goes into the real time service model, which we'll talk about in a second, for consolidation and correlation. So complete cross domain visibility from all IT monitor components. So this is where we integrate event streams and performance metrics. Event streams can be very powerful, even from third parties, and we need to consider those. And automatically relate events to impacted CI. And then automatically relate to a complete model. And it's really important that from the higher degree, the better your service model is, the more impactful operations manager I will be. Automated discovery of the infrastructure CIs and relationships. And again, this is the important key. Dynamic discovery, which maintains one-time service models for accuracy. Okay? So this is the secret sauce. This is how event correlation is done. So we talk a lot about one-time service models. So what that is. So the linking of applications to transactions to infrastructure is really what this is about. Comprehensive, it's automated, and it's always up to date. It provides real-time topology linking business applications to the transaction, including physical, virtual, and cloud. Data and event validation, again, the first thing we do when we create an event management platform is we've got to get the data and the events into the system, including third-party events, and it helps us do that. But it also does the event correlation and based on the business service topology, which what really means is that it's based on the relationship and the dependency of a transaction to the software that runs that transaction to the underlying infrastructure that supports that application. And it correlates them and separates out the symptoms from the cost. And this is where people chase events all day long, taking hours to figure out what the problem is. If they're all said one and they're all red, people will start, start calling up every silo and every domain in IT. It's a big problem. Automatically discover and dynamic environments to keep the service map current, which is critical. Keeping them current. It's a very big differentiator the way this discovers automatically and what others do with a discovery tool. Again, this does it in real time automatically. And we set away. And here we have both HP we are a third-party configuration management database. I have personally brought in things from like you know, BSP, Atrium, for example. They have really good service models around their OSI levels 2 and 3 that I wanted to use to make coverage gaps. And the way it works is that we just take those and we synchronize those with the one-time service models that when we discover on the transaction level that we can link them very quickly. So we want to be able to federate synchronize your configuration items from other data sources. So in this model on the right hand side, you'll see um, a very real service model. So on the top end, this is a business service. This comes from end user availability performance, key performance indicators from business process monitor and real user monitor. So you can see the little red there. Next, you can see where it's linked to the software. So in this case, that transaction with the web server, it goes through a business logic, which is basically code running on the application server, then some some diagnostics that links the two. And then finally, on the infrastructure side, this is information that we pull up from site scope, from operations manager, from NNM, from a UCMDB or EDM product. And the service model that links these together has the best chance and opportunity to reduce the lean time of resolution. And so what it looks like in the dashboard, this is what they call the 360 service health. And I just want to give you an idea of when you look at things from a dependency perspective, um, in the 360 view where you link the applications and business services, 
what item or component adds those configuration configuration items to the dashboard. So in this case, you'll see a bill page. This is a transaction level. This comes from business process monitor and real user monitor. As Diagnostics picks up that transaction, it knows where it came from. It knows the web server it hit. It knows the JVM that executed that code. And it knows where it called out to, to a mainframe or a database or another application here. And finally, the configuration item from the bottom that links the transaction to the infrastructure is as by operation manager agent, third party agent, site scope, or discovery tool. This is where we can use discover configuration items to fill in gaps that we otherwise wouldn't have. And so this is really the basis, the basis of what they call topology based event correlation or feedback. Uh, this is where the financial gains are realized and the IT efficiencies around finding issues come into play. So what you're looking at here is the event browser for events. Now, I have personally seen events that happen or incidents that happen that fill the screen up with step one, everything turns red, and the browser literally starts scrolling. It's coming in so fast. So what TBEX does is that it applies event streams to the service models. It applies performance metrics to the service models so that we can weed out what is a symptom, what could be a cause of symptom, what the cause is. So there's no magic here. It's just done through the relationship between configuration items of a transaction, an application server, and its infrastructure. So when an incident occurs, monitoring reports multiple events, looking at the multiple events, this one's going to weed out what is caused, cause symptoms, and symptoms. And fix the cause, the symptoms go away. You're going to see this in real time where there's a JDEC issue, the connection failed, the map is turned red. And if the server failed, the network started crashing, it looked like the database was having issues, but it was all because the JDEC connection stopped. So the cause was the JDEC connection that came from diagnostics. Um, it saw outward and inward all the relationship events and told them to fix the JDBC or reset the JDBC connection. As soon as they did that, the rest of the cause of symptoms and symptoms went away and it reported on that and it closed the ticket out. Cost of name, performance monitoring. Uh, this is a view that will be bringing in all these different events from the BPM or site scope or third party or agent data that everyone is looking at the same data in the same context that's been normalized. And then prioritizing events with impact analysis, this is where it becomes really important to know the difference between a step one for a database or a switch on a critical application versus a step one on a non-critical app, non-revenue generating app. They occur at the same time, but the things you can do with Operation Manager I is you can assign impact. So each impact or each event will be enriched with business impact score. And it's just based on calculation of which applications must stay up. The so revenue generating, they can never go down, versus non-critical or more prioritized applications. Based service intelligence, this is a new offering from HP. Uh, really important that you're able to do service sort of analytics based on captured events and performance. So the, some of the um, value propositions are things that automate service health reporting, uh, to do predictive and analytics to anticipate IT problems, this is the number one thing I hear from IT executives at every single meeting on this. How do we become more predictive in IT versus getting things through a service desk or having things come up through an event management screen where they have a lot of time, spend a lot of time figuring out what's going on. This is becoming predictive. And the key features are capacity management, Predictive analytics tool, by the way, it's all based on the runtime service model. Optimizing your hardware and software licensing. We use unique algorithms, and this is, by the way, developed in HP Lab, so that we can figure out how to very quickly resource what load placement to maximize the debt to your virtual guest. And this is the optimizer. And then finally, um, allow realization of physical server infrastructure. 
So the being used to capacity. Really, really important in visualization. And one of the biggest problems we see is overutilized or underutilized capacity. There's a tell you about that. So it comes down to service level management, which we talked about before, the lines of IT of the business goal. So the tough reporter <coughs> reports on services across IT, whether they're shared or independent. Service health optimizer is actually a piece of agent that sits on a D center or a DS tech machine so that you can optimize your virtualization center. And service health analyzer is your predictive tool that anticipates issues before they occur based on a baseline and a model that come in. And again, it's really based on a one-time service model. Event remediation and automation. One of the coolest things that HP did that adds a significant amount of value to BSM is to integrate it with operations orchestration to run with automation. So now that you have a couple of capabilities around either advanced correlation where it's a very composite app, and it's not so clean just to figure out if it's a service model issue that's tied together or not. So this allows you to seamlessly launch the run of automation to do known repair fixes at the tier one level. These are things that are highly competitive, for example, starting a process or restarting a server without putting someone in the silo, so it can be done for you. Very suited in how you develop these workflows. It also gives you the ability to manage the first, very diverse operating system, databases, applications. It's really an agnostics tool that applies to any technology that you have to deal with with operations and you can somehow do an advanced incident problem management fix. And the secure execution environments are on flow in the visually guided mode. You can actually watch these flows highlight as it goes through the fix of things. Okay? Um, that's basically the two of uh, the, the DSM platform, the overview, a little bit about what we call positive. Uh, we're the North American Consulting Software uh, Solutions Provider. Um, we've been a partner since 2004. We've heard tremendous growth, over 55% year to year growth over the last three years. And we've been the HP Partner of the Year for 2010, 11, and 12 around the CP and Executive Scorecard. We have about 50 employees. We also include a India offshore team for research and development. And we have included over 140 customers over the past eight years. And so we are doing things that help customers have a positive result at the end of the deployment. And the functional areas that we cover for HP's IT performance suite is IT governance performance management, financial management, this is ITFM, financial planning and analytics. Uh, we are known for project portfolio management. Um, but we've expanded out to and sort of uh, a practice around application lifecycle management, business service management, and service management. And in particular, the product areas are executive scorecard in HP Anywhere. And for financial management, the financial planning analysis, project portfolio management, asset manager, and what's called DDMI. Carbon portfolio management, this is something we've been doing a very long time. So, in this case, the portfolio management, demand, project, program, et cetera. Application lifecycle management, we've gone through the complete stack with APM, the application portfolio management, ALM or QC, Quick Test Pro or Unified Functional Testing, Performance Center Loader, and Diagnostics. We've also developed add-on packages for agile acceleration and DevOps. In the business management space, we are uh, experts at business process monitoring, real user monitoring, as well as diagnostics and the OMR and site scope basement. In the service management, we have a complete dedicated practice for that for service manager, change, release, asset manager, and service anywhere, which is a new offering that's really taking off. So we are in the same long term. I'd like to thank you today for joining me. And we will send out the next version out for the webinar where we go through a deep dive, a day in a life, how to use BSM from the time you get into the event to the triage, to the business impact, to the break set. So again, thank you for your participation today. So we'll see you in our next webinar. Thank you.